Today's guest is Coach Bronson Dance. Uh, Bronson and I connected because we are both going to be speaking at KetoCon in Austin, Texas, July 9th through 11th. So if you guys want to get in on that, um, get some tickets at KetoCon.org. I have a discount code for 10% off. It's higher 10. Okay. So let's talk about Bronson. So Bronson, really, I love this episode. Um, and it kind of reminded me of the Danny Vega episode because it's just like two coaches that are in the freaking trenches with people all the time, spouting off wisdom of all the stuff that we've been learning. So if you want to get into the inside the minds of like what really matters from a coach's perspective, working with people day in and day out, you're going to find a lot of that in this episode. And you're also going to find out about Bronson's story of getting into keto. Really cool. Like, um, and keto really for him is carnivore. And so he's going to talk about why he did that, which I fully support that that was a very wise uh, move in his health journey. So he'll tell you about that. Um, Bronson also used to own a CrossFit gym. So towards the end of the episode, we get into CrossFit a little bit. Um, one thing I really appreciate about, appreciate about Bronson is um, his well, his wisdom towards training and nutrition, but also his focus on functional movements. So we talked about that as well. Um, his different pillars of health and what he's really looking at. That's all very wise. And I fully support, um, he's going to be talking about his new book. So make sure you guys check that out in the show notes. And, um, also let's see if you want to check them out on YouTube, that is ultimate ketogenic fitness.com. So yeah, check out all of that in the show notes. If you want to get links to everything, he's coach underscore Bronson underscore keto on Instagram. And his website is apxts.com, which we'll have link linked as well. So awesome episode. We're talking in everything from carnivore, keto, metabolic upgrades, you know, getting into the mindset of a health journey, which is like everything, right? So getting into just so many wonderful things um, from two experienced coaches, just spouting off all the wisdom that we've learned over the years. So I hope you guys enjoy. Here is Bronson Dance. Okay. So if any of you guys, gosh, you know what I'm thinking, I'm wondering if we should release this episode before KetoCon or after KetoCon, oh, good, because the two a, yeah. of us <laughs> are going to be speaking at KetoCon. So guys, this is Bronson. Well, Pump it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we're both, yeah, we kind of connected because we're both going to be speaking at KetoCon. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know that you did, you, did you say on your website you're 50? Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> I just turned 50. I just turned 50 uh, a couple weeks ago. Yep. Happy birthday. Well, Thank now, you if you guys are not watching on YouTube, like you look, do not look 50, right? So let's <laughs> talk about how you got into keto, how you got into fitness, yeah. especially keto. Cause you just had a book come out um, about keto and how we apply mm -hmm. that in the fit into our fitness regime. So can you tell us how you got into this place that you're at now? Yeah, I got into it um, kind of by accident, kind of by referral. So I actually didn't go keto. I went carnivore. So I didn't even get into, I went straight from like a paleo whole 30 straight mm -hmm. into no veggies, all meat. And okay. that was over, that was about four years ago. It was a little over four years ago. So, uh, for me, it was more, um, I was into fitness already. I actually owned a CrossFit gym at the time I made the transition. So I was super fit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, not really. Um, <laughs> I was in shape. I had a, a ton of physical ability, but I was mm -hmm. not even then healthy, right? Because I was doing the mm -hmm. fitness, but I wasn't really doing the nutrition the way I needed to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I had cut out a lot of processed things, but I was still not really watching what I was eating. I was still kind of just being loosey goosey and eating whatever I wanted to, whenever mm -hmm. I wanted to. Um, so I was still overweight. I was still, you know, I, I owned a gym for about two years and I saw a picture of myself at a, a, a pool party and I was like, Oh, that's not, no, I'm a CrossFit guy. Like I own a CrossFit gym. I should not be looking like that. That is, there's something wrong with that. You know, we all have that moment, right? We're yeah, like, something's right? wrong with this picture or like the it's, angle or, and then you yeah, kind of have right? this like, wait, if I can ever look like that in a picture, then I just look like that. Okay. Got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that was actually the second time. The first time I had that happen was when I was in my late thirties that got, that got me started on the whole process in general. Mm. Um, then seeing that again, several years later, after I'd started, been in CrossFit for years, started a gym. I was like, okay, I should be this guy now. And then it's like, wait, I'm not this guy. What's going on? What am I missing? And then around that same time I found carnivore, I found keto and I, and I say carnivore keto because I want pe people, people get so caught up in the, in the names. Right. <laughs> yeah. And when I talk to people, it's crazy to see the responses. When I tell people like keep carnivore is a keto diet. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, no, wait a second. Right. So 
I, I wrote a book about being ketogenic because I am ketogenic. I am a ketogenic yeah. athlete. I am a, I follow a ketogenic lifestyle. I just do it more on the meat base than including carbs. So it's just another version, another level. Let's um, hit in that. Let's hit into carnivore yeah. a little bit more. So okay. what, what was it more for the, um, metabolic adaptation of like losing body fat, building muscle that you got into carnivore, or was it more for like gut health or ketone production? You know, what, what yeah, drew you to you, it? Both of those two <laughs> things. Right. So I was really super tired of, mm. uh, gaining fat to get strong and mm. get and losing muscle to get lean. It really <laughs> yeah. annoyed the piss out of me to have to go that <laughs> back and forth and yo-yo and starve myself and stuff myself and just that oh, back and yes. forth. Oh, yes. Look at a so, lean and bulk inside. Yeah, of right? So <laughs> the, idea, the idea that I could potentially do both, yes. like it's possible yeah. to maybe lose some body fat, get leaner, build muscle, get stronger, all kind of at the same time and figure mm -hmm. out how that all works was super appealing, especially because at the time I was doing CrossFit and I was like, I want to get stronger. I want to improve all these aspects of my fitness, but I got to get fat to do it. I don't like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second one was I, I had epic IBS and bowel issues. So uh, we don't need to get into too much of the details, but my life was literally controlled if, oh, um, yeah. by when and where I was going and the access I had to facilities. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I couldn't go anywhere with that. Like if I got in my car, I always had a roll of toilet paper, t paper yep. towels, napkins, something in my car because I never knew. Yes. Where, Thank when, you for how, sharing that because there's whatever, so many right? people like they're yeah. living like that, dude, and they don't have to. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, so, and that was the second reason. Like, hey, maybe if I try this, because at first it was like, okay, it's an elimination, it's an elimination diet. Maybe if I cut out everything but the minimum, we'll see what happens. And eating all this meat, I should be able to gain muscle. Right. Maybe I'll get leaner. I didn't know right. if it would all happen that way. Just the idea mm -hmm. appealed to me. Yeah. Um, within three months, two months, the bowel issues. It was like three months in, maybe four months in before I realized, because uh, my routine was such that every time I had to go somewhere, I just had a routine. Go to the bathroom, get in the car, get where we're going, right. go to the bathroom. Like it was just this thing. Right. And then it was about three months of going through this stuff, mm -hmm. right? I was like, I haven't actually had to go when I go to the bathroom, like, wait a second, I'm doing this out of routine, but I don't wow. need to do it anymore. So oh, wow. it was kind of about three months before I realized like, wait, I don't have these issues. Like these issues are gone. They're just gone. And that was four years ago. And it's been that way ever since. Like I don't, awesome. I don't fart anymore. I don't have <laughs> gas anymore. I don't have yeah. urgent bowels anymore. None of that stuff. You know, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. So yeah, I, you know, I, um, have used carnivore with several clients for, from, you know, SIBO to just really persistent gut issues like that. And it's an awesome intervention for something like that, because generally what's happening is there's some sort of dysbiosis in the gut. It's not responding well to the fibers that are either there's not good guys to eat certain fibers or there's too mm -hmm. many bad guys or there's some sort of dysbiosis. And so you take out the food and then people are able to have this window in which they're able to heal. Not to mention, like you said, you've got ketone bodies flooding your system that are anti-inflammatory themselves, decreasing inflammation. You have this new energy source that gets through your blood brain barrier. So you're mentally mm -hmm. feel awesome. And the, you know, the gut issues get healed and you build a bunch of muscle. So like definitely like understand why, you know, a lot of people are drawn to carnivore. And I'd yeah, say for, for sure. me personally, I feel like for, if you have like severe chronic gut issues, it's definitely something to explore for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're not dealing with some, some things, which you may need some assistance, right? Like low stomach acid, get some HCL. Yes. Um, yes. Another thing to think about too, is if you're dealing with gut issues is make sure you're getting your electrolytes, right? Sodium is a key, it's yes. a precursor to, to hydrochloric acid. So yes. you got to make sure that, you know, not only are you eliminating the things that are going to cause problems, but you're doing things to support and help the situation as well. Yeah, I will say I've been on a little bit of a kick with this lately because I just had a client who got rid of her SIBO finally with carnivore. She had been working with like a naturopathic doctor for a year on her SIBO. And I kind of always mm -hmm. just defer if somebody's working with a doctor on something. Right, right. And she was like, can you help me? And I'm like, I'm not a SIBO <laughs> expert, but I know a lot of people have a lot of benefit with doing carnivore. And then like, mm -hmm. let's still use the supplements and things that you're naturopath has given you and she was able to kick it in a few months but cool. now you know we have her also um i don't know i just thought i'd share this maybe i don't know if you've looked too much into like um 
rebuilding the mi microbiome after carnivore mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. possibly during. So that's what I have her doing because what happens, um, Karan Krishnan from microbiome labs, he's a microbiologist. Mm -hmm. He was sharing this on carnivore yogis podcast. You know her, Sarah? Okay. I do know. I do know. Yep. Yeah. And he was saying that like, there's a gut dysbiosis that causes the, the problems with the fibers that then when you get rid of all the fibers, not only do you, your gut heal, but you also, you're able to like restore insulin sensitivity, decrease inflammation, sure. you know, your, your entire metabolism gets healed. But he's like, the problem is you were already missing some of these beneficial bacteria that are able to eat the fibers. And then you do carnivore for a long time and you more of those bacteria die. And so now you really are low on the bacteria that need fibers to be able to you know, produce butyrate short chain fatty acids. So he mm -hmm. recommends like checking at somewhere in that journey and rebuild, seeing if you're missing these keystone strains of bacteria and then doing things to bring those back in. So I think that's a cool thing to explore if you're carnivore. I love carnivore. It's, it's this really smart in intervention and I use it For sure. as a coach, but I also think it's, I love, I love hearing things like that. It's like, okay, yeah, let's figure out why was there an issue? You know, why can I eat half a pan of cauliflower and have zero bloating, zero gas, nothing feel amazing and somebody else can't, I really think it comes down to the gut microbiome and the bacteria that yeah. are present. So just some food for thought, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. Cool the, the whole gut conversation is really interesting because there's so much we don't know. Yes. And <laughs> the, the other, the other aspect is that is what is the expectation for what is needed? I don't, I don't think we really know what is needed yeah, because true. if I'm not eating a diet that has a lot of fiber, why do I need to worry about having a lot of gut bacteria that can work with fiber? So there's a, there's a, a lifestyle aspect that I think can get played into that. Um, that really is kind of a, a personal decision a kind of, you know, where am I at? What am I doing? What am I trying to, to get to that can kind yeah. of play into that as well? Yeah. There's a lot of cool conversations happening with that right yeah. now. Like, you know, like, um, I, I won't get into all the details. We, we can rant <laughs> about that later when we're at KetoCon sure. with like the colon sure. and butyrate and the gut lining yep. and all these things, yep. you know, but, but in a nutshell i mean your story is amazing you're like clearly you can tell through your t-shirt that you're shredded and lean and like your skin looks super healthy and i'm super happy for you that you found a diet that works for you that's brought you to that place mm -hmm. because sure especially with chronic gut issues it's not just having to go to the bathroom all the time it's like that's going to impact how you feel mentally because you oh, can't make sure. the neurotransmitters you need to feel thriving and happy so you i guarantee you must have gone through like a huge like mental switch of like mental wow, i feel yeah. freaking good <laughs> yeah ener energy energy wise recovery mm -hmm. so the biggest the biggest change the so things that i wasn't expecting making this change going from what i was doing to a keto keto lifestyle was um, the volume of training that I can do now, my maximum recovery volume has doubled. Um, awesome. and the speed with which I recover has decreased. So, right. So I, I used to train, you know, my, you know, late thirties, early forties to even four years ago, mid forties. Um, mm -hmm. it was three days a week and I felt like I got hit by a truck every day, wow. you know, wow. and I'm at a point now where I do five, six days a week and you know, like right now I'm on my second rest day. I did some mobility and did some stuff yesterday. I'm doing nothing today. Um, but I worked out six days straight prior. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is the first time I don't usually take two days off in a row. Usually it's three or four days of work a day, and then three or four days in a day. I kind of do a three or four day split in my week. Um, and I, I feel fantastic. I feel great. I can do the work consistently. Yes. I don't have any issues with losing gains or losing progress. So, uh, just that aspect of it, um, has just changed my whole, my whole perspective yes. on, on everything, particularly that, I mean, makes... what happens when you get older. Yeah. Right. Cause right. it's like, well, wait, I'm supposed to be going downhill now. I'm 50. I'm supposed yeah. to be going downhill <laughs> and I'm actually going uphill and everything's getting better. So it's fantastic. I know that I feel the same way. I'll be 40 this year. And I'm like, so, old. so far, so far getting older <laughs> has been like really awesome. Like yep. it just has gotten better and better, but as your health is increasing, that's how it feels. And you can do that in your thirties, forties, fifties. Like you can keep increasing health as you get older, which is like, psh, what? It's yeah, not there's, this there's, over the hill BS we were raised to believe. <laughs> right. There's no age limit on gaining muscle. There's no age limit on gaining physical ability, gaining mobility, and gaining the ability to do things for yourself and be independent. 
There's yeah. No and especially that. with the knowledge that we have now, it's like, okay, yeah, sure. Natural college in production, quote unquote, goes down as you age. Well, what can you do about that? Do things to help you increase college in production as you age, sure. you know? So we have so much information now it can be different. And yeah, I, I would wanted to highlight what you said also about performance increases and recovery times improving, because mm -hmm. that's what I found too. Anybody who has any sort of chronic inflammation, they go oh keto God. or carnivore. And all of a sudden they're like, what? I'm not eating carbs and my lifts all went up and I'm literally gaining more muscle without carbs because it makes sense, right? You're chronically inflamed. How is yep. your body going to be able to recover and rebuild muscle appropriately to get rid of that inflammation and boom, shaka laka, not to mention you're eating a lot of protein, which when you're lifting and training like a beast, those two things pair really well yep. together. Yeah. You reduce know, inflammation. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I like to tell people that keto is more a diet of removal of the harmful things, removal of detractors <laughs> than yeah. it is anything else. Cause you're, you know, it maybe for most people it's getting more protein cause most people don't get enough protein. So right. when they go keto, like, Oh, I need to start getting more protein. Um, maybe not before, but I think that shift is happening very quickly. People are starting to realize yeah. that protein needs to be the focus, not fat. Um, and, and it's, the, it's about eliminating the things that are holding your body back. Totally. Right? The, the less that you, the less extra work your body has to do, the more right. it can focus on what's going to keep it healthy. So, 100%. Amen. Yeah. Get rid of the roadblocks. It's like, let yeah. me add on all these things while I still have all these roadblocks. And it's like, hey, dude. <laughs> or oh, that's a whole no that's a whole nother issue of people getting started and trying to do a whole a bunch of things at the same time. How often do you yeah. run into that? It's like, hey, I just started keto and I'm going to do intermittent fasting and I want to do cold therapy and I want to start working out five days a week. And I want to, it's like, Whoa, hold on. Yeah. Like, let's get you into a routine and then we can add to it. Right. Get that to become normal. Then we can add to it. Like, don't jump in and be like, I'm doing eight new different things all at the same time. Yes. Adaptation is a process. And, and we, I'm sure you probably attract the same kind of clientele. It's like go getters, right? And I get it, man. Like, we get excited and we want it all and we want life without limits. But like, we don't want our health journey to become so stressful that we're decreasing our health because of the stress. Exactly. Right. <laughs> it's meant to make things better, not add to the stress. We're supposed to go the yeah. other direction. Okay. Speaking of your performance and increases and all of these things, you have yeah. your new book, the ultimate ketogenic fitness book. So mm -hmm. can you talk to us about what the basic premise of the book is and what people might find inside? Yeah, it's kind of 10 years. So I've been coaching for, I've been coaching uh, fitness and nutrition for 10 years. I've actually done some other stuff before that. I used to uh, train combatives, uh, mixed martial arts and things like that before that. So cool. I've got several years of coaching under my belt. And this is really just a compilation of things that I've learned over the last 10 years. So nice. it kind of started out as me looking at, cause you know, I've been writing blogs and doing videos for most of that time. So it's kind of like, let's pull all this stuff that I've been writing and putting together for nice. a while and put it into something that's kind of condensed. Um, and, and more of a, it's a, almost, it's a 200 plus page book, but short form of all of the blogs that I have of everything. Nice. Um, and so I break things down into mindset, fitness, nutrition. Um, because I think the journey in and of itself is bigger than just how much do you eat and how much <laughs> do you work out, right? Yeah. Most of what I do as a coach, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, and I, I know you talk about this in a lot of your content online is uh, it's all up here, Yeah. right? It's all up here. So we can have all the knowledge in the world, but if we're not ready to apply it or make the changes that we need to make, it doesn't make it, it doesn't help. So yeah. there's a lot of that in the book. Yeah. I, I always say I'm super nerdy. I have invested so much in my education on training and nutrition and I love biohacking and I love all mm -hmm. the optimization stuff. I love all that, but I still feel like 90% of what I do for a living is mindset coaching. Absolutely. hundred percent. Because I'm like, once we get all of that crap to the surface, it's like, oh, okay. So since you were five years old, you haven't felt like your body is enough. So now you starve yourself and you do these binge and restrict things. And like, no wonder that you, like, it doesn't, none of this is going to work yeah. if we don't address that stuff. Absolutely. Right. And I love that you have, did you say martial arts background before yeah. you went into yeah. this type into of fitness. coaching? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, could you share maybe some, cause I know I love like the, the concepts behind martial, martial arts are like a little more like aligned in beauty. I feel like when it comes to mindset, has okay. that influenced some of the mindset that you've Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I've dabbled, yeah, I, I dabbled in martial arts for off and on for years in Kenpo mm -hmm. and jujitsu and a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. And then when I was in the army, I got, I was certified and I was a 
our U.S. Army combatives instructor. So I did that for about five years, six okay. years, something like that. Um, so that mentality is a little different than general what you think of with mixed martial arts because yeah. in the military, it's more about teamwork and it's more about survivability, right? Win the fight, right? Close the distance, win the fight. Um, but you're, you're kind of expecting that there's a team mentality. So yeah. that actually has transferred very well into coaching because there's a big community piece to what I do. And, and, you know, particularly when it comes to mindset stuff, talking to yes. people and helping them understand that they're not alone in this, right? <laughs> yes. You need to conquer the things that are in front of you and you need to, uh, face your challenges and face your fears and face your past and your blocking and your mm -hmm. cognitive dissonance and all those things. But mm -hmm. there's other people that are there that are going through the same thing and mm -hmm. you can relate and they can help and they can share. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a good combination of both. Yeah, I think that gets underestimated a lot. I have all my one-on-one -on -one clients. We have two group, but all of my one-on-one -on -one clients, we meet together as a group twice a week. And the, the, the takeaway I've had from that is that people find out that they're not special in their problems. Yeah. <laughs> and when you find out right. you're not special, it kind of makes it a little smaller. It's yeah, it, like, makes, you know, it, it takes excuse away. Yeah. Yeah or, yeah. or it's like, oh my gosh, I'm like the only, I like, I'm all I think about is food and I'm obsessed. And then I'm starving myself and, and binging and all. And then like, you find out like 10 other people in this little group bar and you're like, oh, <laughs> this is a common thing. Oh. And then what happens yeah. as a result of that, when you have community is like, it, I'd, I'd say most people have like goodness in their heart and it drives them to not only want to find solutions for themselves, but to be able to, to be able to share Absolutely. with that community. And it gives them purpose in finding solutions. It's like, wow, if I can help figure this out for me, then I can probably help share that with the group and like everyone can get better and it makes it bigger than you and it becomes yeah. more fulfilling that way. So yeah. And that's, that's the key phrase. It makes it bigger than you. When you feel like you're part of something that's bigger than just your issues, yes. then it for somehow it kind of takes some of that weight off and you're spreading and around so it makes yeah. it easier for you to carry your own stuff it, well i all get a little woo woo but i feel like like the universe or god or whatever you believe in is like oh okay you want to help the human collective okay let's give you more resources and epiphany there you go yes. you know like it feels like yeah that no sometimes. i like it that's good yeah yeah <laughs> okay so um we talked about a little bit about mindset before we got started and you said that like one of your biggest things is you know, we hear about this, like, what's your why, but you're like, there's some things people aren't thinking about when it comes to that. Can you talk about finding like your purpose sure. in your health journey? Yeah. The biggest thing to, to remember when it comes to understanding why you're doing it is number two things. One is the first answer you give as to what your why is, is never your why. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, most people, 99% of the people that I've ever dealt with, when you ask them why <laughs> they're doing it, it's actually three, four, five levels, six, seven levels down below that actual reason. So yep. if you feel like you know what your why is, I challenge you to spend some time self-reflecting, yes. evaluating, asking yourself, okay, this is what I think my why is. Why is that important to me? Yeah. Right. Give yourself, dig a little bit deeper. Why is that important to me? I, I want to lose weight. Okay. Why is losing weight important to me? Losing weight is important to me because I feel like it will let me X, Y, or Z. Okay. Yeah. Whatever that answer is, why do I want to do X, Y, or Z? Right. Whatever that answer is, why do I want to do that? So there's a, there's a, there's a, a, a process called the seven levels of why, where you basically just ask yourself why, Love it. take that answer, then ask yourself yeah. why that answer. And you keep yep. doing that until you get to the bottom yep. of, of something that hit. And here's the second piece, the second piece, the final answer that you come to should piss you off. It should make you angry. It should make you sad. It should make you happy. It should make you excited. It should make you hopeful. Exactly. There has to be an emotional connection yes. to what it is that's driving you to make a change. Yes. If there's no emotional connection, then Bullshit. every challenge that you have, yeah, every <laughs> challenge that you face, every everything that's outside your comfort zone is just going to beat you down. Yep. Right. It's yep. got to be emotional. Yeah, right? I get, I'm getting you. chills just thinking about my why. I'm getting chills right now, right? It's just like, ah, I think I, whenever I talk about this, it's mm -hmm. like fire, get fired up. If you don't get fired up when someone asks you why you're doing it, then you're not talking about your why yet. Exactly. That is so wise. You know, I'd say probably you get similar things. Uh, I'll, my first question on my little intake form before they ever talk to me is like, why do you want to work with me? And it's like, I just, 
want to feel better or right. I hate the way I look or it's I'm the sick same of answer everybody this, gives, right? Yeah. I'm sick of carrying yeah. this weight around or like, you know, it's just something surfacey like that. And then honestly, I'm sure you do the same thing. I just keep digging into that. Just like you're talking about on usually till they cry. <laughs> 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 then I'm like, there it is. <laughs> Found it. Right? But it's like wake up call. And usually I think, you know, why we do what you're saying. And I, by the way, that process of asking why, 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 I do that in journaling a lot for all sorts of things and yeah. stuff I don't want to admit. It's like, why do you feel like you need to share stuff on social media? Okay. Why do you think that? You know what I, 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 mm -hmm. I dig into myself all the time. And it's usually there's something underneath that you're not seeing that if you can like, turn your ego down enough to admit those things. Yeah. You can admit where there's a wound or where there's proving or where, you know, and sometimes you're like, no, dude, that's really freaking a line. Like freak. I feel that in my soul. But a lot of the times it's not that it's like, oh, I feel like I need to do this because I have that wound from childhood. All right. At yeah. least I know now. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. There's, there's a, there's either a desire to do something out of bad reasoning or there's a resistance to do something. Uh, that you may not even be aware of. In both cases, you have to be honest with yourself and be aware. You got to be mindful of what is the thought process behind why I do or don't want to do something mm -hmm. and kind of dig into it a little bit. Yeah. And that emotional connection is everything. I hear people say a lot, like um, my motivation for being fit is for my kids so that I can be healthy for my kids. And I'm like, tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> What does that, what does that like, even mean? Yeah. I'm like, is it, or did you hear somebody say that? And it sounds yeah. nice. Or like, but then if I hear, well, my dad died when I was seven because he was so unhealthy and it was so horrible for me that I never want. I'm like, yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Sure. <laughs> I feel that that drives you. There's an emotional like thing there, you know, but these surfacey things, I think you're, it's so wise to really help people facilitate that. So if you guys are listening, like really do what Bronson said and like, what does drive you like that answer? If you can be really honest, like brutally self-aware in terms yes. of your job, how you spend time with your family, you know, sure. especially if you're butting your head up to resistance, right? Like if you're like, a absolutely I'm saying, I want to do this, but I'm not doing it. You're lying somewhere. You're lying to yourself on your reasons. Yes. Right. So, yes. Yeah. And, and understanding where you are in the process of self-actualization and needs, right? So you're familiar with hierarchy of needs and where yeah. people are in that. And, and if you're at a point where some people are at a point where they want recognition yeah, and they're afraid to, they're afraid to admit that. Yes. Right. Yes. It's okay. It's okay to, it's to okay. say my driving force right now is I want to look bad as hell so that when I go to the beach, everybody looks at me because it makes me feel good about myself. Yeah. That can be an emotional thing because maybe you've right. never felt that way before. Right. Right. And it you know? might be and part that's, of your that's journey. That's perfectly fine. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and it might be part of your journey for a reason. Like I always yeah. I always tell people, like uh Mike Mutzel had me on his podcast. I don't think it's come out yet, but he was like, What got you into fitness? I was like, trauma. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I yeah. I didn't feel good enough. My marriage is falling apart. I had to prove my worth. Like, but I healed from that emotionally, but I'm grateful that I was in that not so optimal place for a while because simultaneously, while I was in my little traumatic, not enoughness, I also learned a lot about the human body and became fascinated with it and learned that I could change all these habits. Was it, right. it was, was my why healthy? No, not at no. all. But I still think it was part of my path for a reason. So I freaking Absolutely. honor that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the why is what needs to get, what you need to get moving and it will, you're okay. Your why is going to change. Yeah. Yep. So accept that as well. And that's why this is a continual process. It's not a, this is my yes. why and I'm good for 10 years. Your why could change in three months. You could yep. learn something new or experience something you've never experienced before as you go into the journey and you have to sit back and go, okay, hold on a second. This is different than I expected. There's something else going on here. I see a different path forward that yes. I didn't know was available to me exactly. that changes what I can, what my perception and what my belief of what I'm capable of doing is. So my why needs to change. So there's a whole bunch of, I had a client yesterday that I got on the first call with her. She read my, she got the book. She read my book. She went through that process with like a week ago. I got on a call with her yesterday. And part of the conversation we had yesterday was my why's changed already. We haven't even started yet. Right. Wow. She went through the whole process a week ago and then she got on. And she's like, I think I'm actually realizing that there's more to it and I need to reevaluate my why. <laughs> I'm like, that's fantastic. It's day one. Let's yes. go. 
you know? Yes. So it's going to change, guys. It's going to change. Yeah. And any kind of thinking like that, where that you can, you can sense, even just me hearing it, you know, third party, I can sense that she had some deep stuff come up in her. She was like, wait a minute. Oh, you know, yeah. anytime <laughs> you can get to that place. Right. Wow. I mean, it will really drive you and wherever you're going. And it's, it's personal at that point, you know, Absolutely. instead of just this, like, I'm supposed to do this. I have to do this or, you know, <laughs> We do so much out of obligation and expectation that yeah. is so unhealthy and so unnecessary. Yeah. If we yes. would, if we, if we were to start just focusing on what am I doing that's best for me, and that doesn't mean it's it's selfish, right? What's best for you could be doing something for your family, doing something for your kids, yes. providing. That's yes. part of the process, <laughs> but you have to focus on you first. Yeah. Uh, so I have a a coach. Uh, I don't know what to call her. She like changed my whole freaking life. She does the work of Byron Katie, but she always talks about the energy of self-sacrifice. And mm -hmm. I think you're hitting on that. Like when we are in the energy of self-sacrifice is actually, that to me is actually the most selfish thing. Because if I feel like I don't want to do this, but I'm doing it quote unquote for you, but I don't want to, and there's some resentment there in the end, I'm really doing that for me because I have a story that that makes me a better person. That makes me a kind person. That makes me a selfless person. So it's really yeah. for me. And I'm going to resent you in the process of doing that. Right. So like being quote unquote selfish of like, what do I want? Do I want to do that? And being able to be fully in that energy of no, dude, I actually want to help you move. Like I love you and care about <laughs> you. And I want to versus I got to yes. help you move because because you'll be mad at me if I don't like think of the energy difference there in relationships. Sure. So it is like the energy of self-sacrifice is gross. It's not, it is, it is a selfish energy actually. Yeah. 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 And that's actually <laughs> a, an interesting segue into one of the topics I talk about in the book. And it's one of my hot topics. And that is the energy transfer, the energy focus of thinking about fat loss versus quality of life. When we focus on <laughs> losing yeah. fat as our goal, we're in a, yes. we're in a mindset of of limited thinking. We're in a mindset of restriction, a mindset of yes. sacrifice, a mindset of I can't, right? When we change that focus into what can I do to improve my quality of life, build muscle, build physical ability, um, get more protein, do the things that are adding quality and adding positive. to, then it's yes. a positive mindset. It's a growth <laughs> mindset. It's, 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 a, it's a whole different thing. And it just yes. opens up the potential for what we can do. So it's, it's very much the same thing, energy transfer. Yeah. Yes. I love that. I feel like if we had like a bunch of coaches right now, we'd all be like, yes. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> like It's about adding in the good, not just restricting right. yourself and living in this horrible, I can't energy. Right. Yeah, like hundred percent. I always say happiness is a, is a part of health. Like we can't yeah, forget that. Like, absolutely. so when you're thinking about the yummy, like I just had some big Greek yogurt bowl with keto granola and like Lily's chocolate chips. And it was like freaking delicious. And like, for me, like that's, happy. That's, I, I'm not like, Oh, I have to eat my diet food. <laughs> like I just literally had like dessert. Well, it's funny. You know? That's why, that's one of the reasons why I tell people to stay away from chicken. Chicken is yeah. like one of the most sad things to eat <laughs> in the world. I mean, obviously you can make chicken and it can be very tasty and whatever yes. else, but if I had to choose the things that I'm going to eat, like chicken is at the <laughs> bottom of the list guys. Well, really, you know, Dr. Mercola stood up at um, Dave Asprey's last biohacking event and basically pointed the finger, singled out chicken as one of the biggest contributors to our decreases in human health purely wow. because grain fed chicken, which all chicken, chicken. is grain fed. Now I, I still eat it and I balance sure. this out, but just, this is definitely good food for thought. Even like my, even my regenerative ranch that I work with, I was like, Hey, do you, do you feed your chicken any grain? I know they're free foraging. These are like the right. best chickens you can get. He's like, yes, unfortunately we still supplement. It is organic, but we still do supplement with some grain. Well, right. when chickens are eating all this corn and all these things, they become inflamed. And so the, the omega-6 inflammatory marker yep, in chicken higher. is actually really high. Yeah. So we're eating so much chicken and I look at like kind of like the bodybuilding community and stuff, you know, and I'm all like, the oh, oh my gosh. they're eating so much chicken breast and it's like super inflammatory. And yep. then half the guys are taking steroids, which is super inflammatory. And like, ah, like, no wonder they start getting all inflamed. It's yeah. Like sitting ducks, you know? So yeah. I don't mean to scare anyone away from chicken, but it's like, think about that. You want to balance out that um, inflammation load and not make that the sure. only protein source you're eating. Yeah. So. yeah. I see. I get a lot of people that are afraid. They're still afraid of fat and you know, oh, they've gone man. to chicken as their default because it's the leanest right. thing out there. And I'm like, look, look, you know, 
we, we'll have the fat conversation, but if there's anything that I can do is to, to help you out is get off the chicken, get onto some red meat and have some fun. Enjoy yes. what you're eating, you know? Yes. yes. Red meat's okay. way more enjoyable. Are you, are you only coaching people on carnivore and keto or do you do other approaches too? Um, so my approach is really not any one specific. I don't have a title for yeah. my approach. My, my approach, so my, the, the tenets of my coaching methodology, I have six things that I focus on. Uh, nutrient density, bioavailability, and satiety on the nutrition nice. side. Nice. And then on the exercise of fitness side, it's move well, move often, and move weight. Mm. Right. Those, okay, are the, those are the six things that I kind of base everything off of. Okay. Let's, let's hit on them real quick. Do you mind? Those yeah. are cool. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So nutrient density, bioavailability, which is like how well you can absorb those nutrients mm -hmm. and satiety. Satiety. Yep. Yes. Beautiful. Yep. Can you elaborate so, a little bit on that? Yeah. So basically the way that I look at it is if we're focusing on getting the most nutrients that our body can use while managing the energy intake, then we're going to be overall more healthy. Yes. Period. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you call it carnivore, keto, dirty keto, ketovore, lazy keto. It doesn't freaking matter, people. Just whatever is, and, and the, the, the cool thing about this is it's the, the underlying goal, the, the end point for that, this kind of methodology, because it's a principle. It's not a tactic. There's a very big difference. Do, I had a conversation with someone the other day, and we were talking about the dip, you know, why dogma is so bad, because dogma is a focus on how you do something not why you do something. Mm -hmm. And we want to stay away from how, why yes. you do it is more important. Okay. Yeah. So I don't care if you're keto. I don't care if you're carnivore. Are you trying to be healthier, or improve your quality of life? Let's do the things that are going to make that happen. If yeah. that for you includes a half a cup of rice every day, then bam, that's great. If it's not setting you in the opposite direction, yeah. then who freaking cares? Yeah. Some people can, that might be more right? optimal like, for them. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, whatever. <laughs> So mm -hmm. that's kind of the basis there. Um, we're, we're going towards the underlying thing is what is going to get you to move in the direction you want to move. Yes. Okay. So as long as you're getting as much nutrients and it's getting as much of them into your body as possible and you're able to utilize, and here's the other, the, the other aspect, utilize the natural processes of the food and your body to yes. manage your energy intake. Yes. Okay. Guys, it's not about willpower. It doesn't have to, well, I should say this. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to be about willpower. Right. It, your body has right. natural functions right. that can help you manage the intake that you're having, right? Yes. If you're supporting that. Okay. Yes. Um, so that's where the, the, the nutrition piece comes in. Those things are, I mean, that's what we need. And, and I'll just highlight different. Yeah. Yeah. And like bioavailability absorbing, like your, uh, your story is a perfect example of that. Like, it, let's say you tried to go vegan with your gut issues that you were having, like oh. you would not be absorbing nutrients. You would become oh. increasingly more inflamed and yeah. your health would suffer. You'd be hungry all the time, no energy, just, it would be a nightmare. And Horrible. so your approach of going carnivore for what you were experiencing definitely was the answer for nutrient absorption and sure. satiety and uh, increasing metabolic health period, you know? So yeah, that is, yeah. that's it, it, in different strokes for different folks. You know what I mean? People yeah. have different starting points. <laughs> exactly. Different starting points. And I think we're all trying to get to what's best for, for, for us. Right. So I, I yes. think I, I truly believe that there is an optimal diet for general human, the general human physiology, biology. That doesn't mean there's an optimal diet for everyone, okay? Because yeah. there's a lot of other factors. There's lifestyle, yeah. environment, epi epigenetics, upbringing, right. preference. I mean, there's so many variables that go into that. Totally. And if you look at uh, optimal being the center of a target, I want to put the target on my face, the center of a target, yeah. right? And then all the area, the other rings that go around outside the target, we're all starting at different points. And if we're all trying to yes. get better, we're all trying to move closer into yeah. whatever that optimal area is. That doesn't mean we're all going to do things the same. That doesn't mean we're all nope. going to, none of, I guarantee you, none of us are going to get into the center. We're just trying to get closer to center. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so if we look at it as like, Hey guys, we're just trying to do the best that we can yeah. and think about how are we helping other people get better? Not, are you doing it the same way I'm doing it or not? Yeah. Then we, yes. we it's going to help a lot more people. A hundred percent. And it's, a, it's a basic, it's basic human respect, you know, of saying like, you know, hearing people, I, I've, I've had people do keto that they're like, 
dude, this is not going well. And I'm looking at everything and I'm like, okay, yeah, like it's not. (laughs) So we found out you wanted to try keto and I agree, like, let's move you off. And then other people, I'm like, dude, you definitely need to do keto. You got insulin resistance and inflammation out the wazoo. And like, it is going to be easier. You take somebody who's like obese and inflamed and insulin resistant, like, holy cow, it's just gonna make your life so much easier. It is gonna be so much more enjoyable, you know? So different starting points. Yeah. And just like your why is going to change over time, yep. what works for you is going to yep. change over time. Right. So 100%. when I first started, um, complete and utter abstinence from all carbs is what I needed. Totally. Now, I still do that because I still don't feel a need for them, Yeah, but I'm much more tolerant of them. I'm not insulin resistant. Nice. I can yes. do that. If I want to go out and have an ice cream or eat some cake at a kid's birthday party or whatever else, it's not going to destroy me like it would have in the past. Nice. Right. Because nice. I'm, I've, I've gotten, I, li- I like to equate it to finances. You know, before when you're unhealthy, you are in severe debt, right? Yeah. I'm $500,000 in debt when I'm 70 yeah. pounds heavier than I was now and I'm insulin resistant and I'm depressed and have IBS and all these issues. Yeah. I'm in yeah. debt. I can't yeah. afford to spend money somewhere else. Right. Right. So every time I go have those French fries or have that ice cream, I'm spending money that I don't have to spend. <laughs> yeah. Right. So as I get out of that debt and I get healthy again, I get back to zero and then I get the fitness involved and I start doing other things. And now I've got more muscle mass and I've got better really? metabolic function and totally. no inflammation and all this stuff. I can go out. Now I have some spending money. Yeah. You got if some I want options. to go out and have something, yeah. I, want to, I can. Now, do yes. I do that to the detriment of my progress or my mental state or my right. perception or my relationship with food? Absolutely not. That's a different discussion. Totally. But I have more options that I didn't have before. Yeah. And it's all based in self-love and self-honoring is what I'm hearing right. too. Because it's like, of course, I know I can have all that stuff. But like, you know, for me, it's like I, I can have like a dozen donuts and it probably wouldn't dent me much in my like physical appearance or whatever, my right. body composition. I don't want that because I know what it's doing to my insides and my mental performance. It's like, no, yep. thanks. So I just have like a built bar or something. I just, I don't <laughs> want to feel like, it. and it's, it's right. a self-loving place that you get to. Yeah. For me, for me, when I go off plan, it usually just means I'm eating more meat. Like mm-hmm, yeah. seriously, literally like if I, cause I, you know, I'm, I'm doing some stuff now where I'm tracking and I'm doing some experimentation with things and I have a plan. And if I decide, you know what, I'm going to go over my macros today. I don't think, oh, I'm going to go make some cake or I'm going to go make a treat. <laughs> yeah. It to me going over is, you know what? I think I'm going to eat an extra pound of lamb today. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. going off for me. So it's, it's just the mentality and how you look at it. And I love that too, because you're honoring your body's natural s- hunger signals. And who knows, like you could have trained in a certain way where your body's like, oh my gosh, are you going to have a lot of mental stress and your brain's like, Hey, I need more energy. Or maybe you didn't get as much sleep the night before. And your body's like, I'm mm-hmm. hungry. And if you would just honor that with more healthy food, the, right. the whole system just flows. You know, yeah. I think it's when we get in this restrictive, like, Oh no, you can't have an extra pound of lamb. No, no, no. That's when people go <laughs> into these like right. bingey things, you know, just honor those things tidy signals yeah. more nutrition. <laughs> yeah. And that's that mindset of restriction versus growth, right? It, the more yes. you tell yourself you can't do something, the more you want to do it. Yes. So if right. you can focus on the, focus on the <laughs> things that you can do that are going to help you move forward, then you don't have that struggle as much. The wisdom of coaches. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> if you're saying don't eat what, you know, what are people's like junk foody things? Like a, a lot of people like sour candy, don't eat sour candy. I'm like, you, all your subconscious is hearing is sour candy. I promise you, like you will be eating sour candy. (laughs) If you were instead of like, of course I can have sour candy. You don't even think about it anymore. You're like, oh yeah, but I know I can have that, but what, okay. You know what? What's it going to do? Right. Yeah. (laughs) Right. So think instead of, instead of saying don't have sour candy, like I'm really hungry. What can I have? I can have some bacon. I can have some steak. Sounds good. Like what can, what can I have instead of what, what can't I have? Right. Exactly. Big, what do I big want? Difference what in sounds focus? good? Well, yeah. That's healthy. Yeah. Okay. Let's hit yeah. your, um, your, fi- your physical pillars, the fitness yeah, pillars. So move well, move weight, move often, whichever order you want to put those in. So mm-hmm. basically, uh, the first thing that comes to mind when I talk about move well is tech is, um, technique, consistency, intensity. So that's the order in which you should progress your movement and how you're working. Always focus on technique first, the intensity mm-hmm. that you're doing it, doesn't make a difference. If you're just getting started, um, I was actually doing a movement review for a friend, another coach of mine who had a a client send in a video and the person was in the video was doing squats with a barbell on her back. And Mm -hmm. the first thing I said is, 
she doesn't need a barbell on her back. Yeah. <laughs> right? Even if it's empty, it doesn't matter. Like she's got to get the basics down of just moving her body under yes. no extra stress yes. before she can add to that intensity. So right. technique first, perform that technique consistently over a yes. period of time, and then you can increase intensity. Yes. So that's what moving well means, right? Yes. Full range of motion, proper muscle activation, good posture, core engagement, all those things. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't just go in there and start throwing weight around and doing crazy stuff because that's what you see Tara doing. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> if you would like to make sure that your weaknesses stay weaknesses and your yes. overcompensations become bigger overcompensations, yep. go ahead and just don't pay attention to anything Bronson just said. <laughs> just be a bad A and you just keep on with your bad self. So you end up in the doctor's office right. because you can't exactly. move, you know, or you have a shoulder yeah. injury or knee injury or whatever. And yeah, I, I, I saw that you um, have the FMS, the functional movement mm -hmm. screen certification when I was getting ready for the podcast. And yeah, that, especially Especially remote coaching, you know, that's really popular now. And I think we both, I'm, I'm very aligned with that same way of thinking. I, there are very few people remotely that I'm ever going to put under a barbell. They've got to be oh, a yeah. super experienced, maybe a coach themselves before mm -hmm. I'm going to put that in a program. Because most people, like I say to my clients, send me a video if you're not sure, you know, but like a lot of people won't. And I just honestly yeah. can't bear the thought of some lady, right. some, you know, 45 year old, and she's like with a barbell in her back. And yep. if I saw her in real life, I'd be like, ah. Ah, but I've got that in her program. So I was wondering, could you talk about, you know, um, functional movement, maybe a little bit deeper of how people can understand, like what can go wrong if you don't do what I consider, I call it physical therapy stages yeah. of training where it's not yeah. fun. You're not a bad A, but you got to learn how to activate your glutes on this movement or things like that. Can yeah. you talk about, yeah. you know, what people yeah. need to know? Good, good functional training is boring as hell. Yep. Right. Because learning how to control your body and learning how learning oh. how the body works, it takes time. Like it's it's like learning how to ride a bike for every joint in your body. Well said. Uh, it, so it's 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 not just, oh, okay, put your arms over your head. It's put your arms over your head, make sure your shoulders in a good position, make sure your ribcage are down, squeeze your butt. Like there's there's a lot of things. So um that's why, like in my program, I don't have any barbells in my program. I my remote right. program is all dumbbells, kettlebells, medicine totally. balls, stuff like that, body weight. Um, and because I don't have the ability to evaluate everybody right. that's in there. Um, right. so starting and, and I beat it in everybody's head every single day. Like if you're feeling like you're not sure, then scale down. Yes. <laughs> every, if you're feeling like you're not sure, then that means you've already gone further in the complexity or intensity of what you have. You need to go back to something 100%. that you're confident in. in. So yes. confidence is a big key. Um, but yeah, learn it, learning how to move your body. Um, God, I mean, I've been doing this for over 10 years, 12 years, and I'm still learning things. You know, there's still things yeah. that I see that it's like, yeah. and I have, you know, and the little, you know, humble brag, I have very good body control, very good body awareness. Mm -hmm. I've been doing martial arts for years. I've been coaching mm -hmm. for years. There are things that I can do with individual joints and stuff that people are like, how the hell are you doing that? Um, and I still learn things about myself, about yes. other techniques of ways to, ways to do it. And there's some things Same. that like I try to do and I'm like, how the hell can I not do this? You know, like, so yep. it's, it's an ongoing process. It takes time. Yeah. Yep. And I, I'll say too, like, you know, I'm a biomechanics geek, but when I'm learning something new, I mean, truly, like I was trying to do these like sideline rear delt raises. I'm using fives because I'm like, right. I gotta, I gotta feel this out for a while. Like, hold on. Yes. Gonna, you know, start light. While mind muscle. Mind that. muscle. Yeah. Yes. Mind muscle. If you can't be like one of the, my, my favorite questions for people that I'm training is where am I supposed to feel this? That's the exact right question to ask. Mm -hmm. Because you need to understand what that exercise is doing and where you're supposed to feel it. If you're doing, if you're doing curls and you're like, man, my shoulders are sore. Right. Guess what? You're not doing them right. It's not a shoulder <laughs> workout. <laughs> you know? Right. And so then, things like that, understanding where things are supposed to work and learning how to feel your body. Yeah. What am I activating? What is the purpose of this? Wait, my adductors? What, what are adductors? Like, get curious, right. you know? Like, yeah. It's playtime. You know, it's playtime. It, pull up like uh, adductor or hamstring anatomy. Where are these suckers in my body? You know, like if you're yep. going to be training, even if you're not a trainer, it's like, wait, you know, I like, I don't mean to like be 
rude, but like I saw a, a TikTok trainer saying that like the glute medius was like their under butt, like on the bottom of their uh -oh. butt. I'm like, Oops. that's not where the glute medius that's is, right. you know? And that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But you know, like even just get curious, you know, like where these things are in your body, if you're going to be in there working on, because like right. that, will, to me, that helps increase the activation is like knowing where, where are my rhomboids? Where are my lats? Where did, oh, they come off my spine like that and they attach to my humerus. Oh, okay. Well that really helps me know <laughs> how yeah. to do things because I just know where it is in my body. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know? and that's, and it's not, you don't have to get into become, you don't have to become an exercise science specialist. You don't have to right. become a kinesiologist, but just having an understanding of Basic. what is this movement supposed to do for me? Yeah. Yeah. That's all it is. Just play around. It's play. I tell people all the time, it's playtime, like working out and doing stuff. Number one, you're doing it to improve your quality of life. It should be functional, which means it's just like when you're a kid playing, if you watch kids play, everything they're doing translates to movements that they're going to do as yeah. adults every day. So yeah. it's functional movement. You're doing things, you're pushing, you're pulling, you're squatting, you're hinging, you're yes. lunging, you're doing all these things, play around with it, see how it works for you, what, what you feel like. Yep. I think of it as playtime. So totally. And uh, yeah, I have a uh, Mike Boyle's certified functional strength coach and it, like that, that I still use his exercises like om in almost all of my programs because you're not going to get hurt and you're actually going to be able to apply it to life. Um, actually farmers carries, sorry guys, you got to humor them. us for a little coach talk. My, I, my massage girl lives on a farm. Like she's like this like total baddie. And she was yeah. like, I realized like I farmers carry, like I'm literally just doing that. You know what I mean? And that like, I was like, dude, mad respect girl. <laughs> and she's like, I'm carrying big old jugs of milk and all this. I'm like, yeah. that is awesome. You know, but like the truly like, think of that. Like, how am I actually going to use this? I mean, we like our show muscles, right. But mm -hmm. also throwing some things in, like, like you're saying that like help you move better in regular life. Like yeah. it really increases your quality of life. Cause you're like, wow, I feel so good in my body. Absolutely. Okay. You want, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you want to be able to do things that translate everything yes. we do in the gym has nothing to do with anything we do in the gym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's all about what we do outside and the other 23 hours of the day, yes. you know? Yes. Okay. Last thing I have to ask you since you ran a CrossFit gym, you said, right? Yeah. Okay. I have no doubt that you're like a super biomechanics geek and have like lots of body <laughs> control. So I'm curious, like being in the CrossFit environment, which I actually really like CrossFit. Like people always assume that I'm going to hate it because there's all these like haters. So I'm like, no, CrossFit, like when done well, one is a killer workout. I love the community vibe. Like it's great for people who love a challenge and all of that. Yep. But I'm sure you saw like some common things and CrossFit that could be like issues with people on, for, did, could you elaborate if you saw any like common things for people to watch out for if they're doing yeah. CrossFit style workouts? The, you said it, CrossFit done well. So, mm -hmm. and that's the key. It, it, there's no difference in CrossFit, um, the application of the methodology and yeah. how it's going to affect or negatively or positively someone than any other program based on who's applying it. Okay. So it's all about coaching. Yeah. It's 110% yeah. all about the coaching. Yeah. If it's less mills, Zumba, um, orange theory, F 45 or CrossFit, it doesn't make a difference. If you have True. a crappy coach, you're going to get hurt. Yeah. Yes. Right. So the, right. the, uh, the whole idea, and I'll be honest with you, the whole idea of technique, consistency, intensity is part of the very first thing that a new CrossFit coach learns the day one mm. that they walk in the door. Okay. Yeah, so good. The, the thing that people don't understand about CrossFit, and I love having this conversation, is every gym, so CrossFit is an affiliate, it's not a franchise. Okay, mm -hmm. so a gym owner, I want to start a gym, I go get certified, I open up a gym, I get my building, I get my equipment, I pay the, the whatever the fee is for the affiliate. That just means I can put CrossFit on the name, on my, on my name, right, on my building. Mm -hmm. There is no guidance. There is nothing from yeah. CrossFit that says you have to do a certain thing. Okay. I can come up with my own programming. I can train my coaches the way that I want to train my coaches. I can coach the classes and structure the classes, how I want to coach them, right? The methodology that I'm using should be the CrossFit methodology, which there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into that. That's a discussion for the day, but it's based on consistency technique or mm -hmm. technique, consistency, intensity. That's the foundation. That makes sense. If I'm 50 years old and I'm walking into a CrossFit gym 
And that gym is being run by a 25 year old who just graduated college and was a D1 athlete. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, <laughs> I will have a different experience than if I go to a gym that's run by a 45 year old mom or dad of four kids who's also yeah. just gotten out of or is still currently working in IT on the side. Yeah. And different goals, different backgrounds, different perspectives. Right. So the environment's different, the goals are different. Right. The D1 ad, the former D1 athlete is he's thinking, I'm going to compete in CrossFit. I'm going to the games. Yeah, I'm no. doing everything as hard and as fast and as intense as I can. <laughs> That's probably sure. not where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. So it's just, it's a difference. So evaluate yeah. just like you would a personal trainer. You go talk to a personal trainer, you kind of get what their perspective is on fitness and what they're doing and their methodologies. You talk to their clients, you look at their stuff online, you kind of see, does this person fit with where I want to go? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, you evaluate a CrossFit gym the exact same way. Yeah. I think I saw, you know, some little Instagram post the other day. I think yesterday it was like, like, remember when you're like hiring someone to learn from them to ask, has this person walked the path that I want to go? And I think that's kind of what you're saying right. there. It's like, yep. Yep. you know, I'm 50 and, you know, maybe have kids or married job, all this stuff. Do I want to learn, you know, to each their own? You can try it if you want, but you're, yeah, yeah. you're exactly right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so yeah. certain considerations for um, people who have similar goals, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And if it's, and if it's done right, to get back to the specifics about your question, if CrossFit is done right, just like if any training is done right, right? You don't do CrossFit, but the way that you train is you evaluate where the person's at and you right. find a way that works for them to get the stimulus that you want yep. in a movement pattern that they can perform con yep. consistently. Yep. That's what it is. So yep. there's a whole course within CrossFit called the scaling and modification course. So right. it's all about how do you identify where somebody's at and give them modifications or alterations right. so that they can get something out of the workout. Yep. Awesome. Yep. And then just slowly keep progressing, you know, yep, and that's absolutely adaptation is a slow process and it's, it's fun. Process. I always remind people, I'm like, it's fun. Like if you were already everywhere you wanted to be, you would be bored. So yay for you that you have something yeah. to work on. <laughs> you know? and, it's, and it goes into my, my talk that I'll be talking about in KetoCon is one of the reasons why we never, if you're including fitness in your overall picture of what you're trying to do to improve your quality of life, you will never stall. There are so many aspects to quality of life yeah. that include not just nutrition, not just mindset, not just right. and, and fitness, but all those together, you're never going to stall. The only way you stall is if you focus on one thing and then that one mm -hmm. thing stops. If you don't look at the thousands <laughs> of other things that are going on, yeah. then you're going to get frustrated because you feel like you stopped. Right. Yeah. And it's fun. You know, like I'm on a yoga kick right now and like really yep. getting in with my massage therapist and my chiropractor and learn, learning all these new things that have been happening in my body. It's fun. It's fun if you yeah. look at it that way. It's just like a constant journey and constant different stimuli that we can give our body to change. And if you look at it as like a fun exploratory journey, it is. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Okay. Let's get into, you have your app. So all the ways people can find you, by the yeah. way, I think we'll bump this podcast up so that it comes out before KetoCon. So okay. um, hopefully my assistant doesn't kill me on that. <laughs> so, um, KetoCon, it's July 9th through 11th in Austin, Texas. Yep. We will both be speaking there. You're going to be speaking on how to overcome plateaus, mm -hmm. correct? How, to, av how then, to avoid them and never have them. Okay, awesome. And then um, uh, your book is, we'll link that in the show notes, but it's called The Ultimate okay. Ketogenic Fitness Book. Yep. And um, and then you have an app and website do you want to fill them in yeah, on all so that my socials? Website, yeah 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 so all this stuff so my website awesome. is ultimate ketogenic fitness.com mom the biggest place probably to go and see me uh, information is my youtube channel so ultimate the uh, youtube.com slash c whatever it is it's ultimate ketogenic fitness on youtube everything okay. is ultimate ketogenic fitness it, it goes awesome. with everything um awesome. and then i'm on instagram coach underscore bronson underscore keto um but that's that's pretty much it Okay. And then the book, awesome. the book is on Amazon. Okay. We will link all that up. Thank you so yep. much. This was fun. I was like, Absolutely. it just turned out to be like a bunch of coach wisdom. Yeah, right. We're like, come on. <laughs> so, so we're on the, you. are we on the fitness panel together too? I think. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we'll, we'll get to geek out there too. That'll be, That'll fun. be fun. All right. Thank you so much, Bronson for coming sure. on. Appreciate it. It's been fun.